and we're going to lead off with Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, Entertainment Weekly, which seems to have the needle in its vein of all things coming out of Lucasfilm uh, this time around. Like, seriously, they're getting everything yep. first. And why not? They do a great job breaking everything out. They just released like a whole bunch of new images, as well as an incredible interview with J.J. Abrams giving us some insight into this movie that we have not yet had before. Now, before we get much into that, let's actually take a look at these images. So, Dennis, let's bring up... First of all, we get a good, this This is a poster. This is a poster that goes on my bedroom wall. It's gorgeous. Look at the snowfall in the background. <laughs> the, <laughs> the composition is so well done. Okay, let's move on to the next one here. This other image, great look at John Boyega. It looks like a downed TIE fighter. It looks like something we saw in the uh, behind the scenes footage that was yeah. uh, displayed at Comic-Con good, first. Good point about that. So let's bring up the next one here. This is kind of cool. We see that almost this is reminiscent of the Jawas on Tatooine that like go out and hunt droids that are out in the <laughs> wild. I guess that's an industry. They got BB-8 there in the net. That looks pretty cool. I love the way that, you know, her mount, whatever it is that she's right, is kind of like knelt down like a horse would kneel down. Looks pretty cool. All right, what's next? And, of course, the class. I remember when we were looking at these ones. This is the one that you jumped up at. Well, yeah, because it's like, oh, that's the clearest shot we've had yet of C-3PO's new improved red arm. We don't know why it's red. We don't know why he needed a new arm. R2-D2, as usual, probably has the answers. <laughs> I think he was shoplifting something out of <laughs> Zales or something like that. And, you know, the Zales. <laughs> anyway, um, we got our first good look at him with Gleason as General. What's the general's general name? General Hux. General Hux there. Um, it, it's, it strikes me he looks young. I always knew, he, I mean, he is young, but I mean, seeing him, he looks a little bit young to be a general to me. It smells, and look, a lot of times with Star Wars, there is the case of nepotism where it's like, oh, you know what, you're my kid, so now all of a sudden you're in, maybe that happens with Kylo Ren, we'll talk about that in a second, but this guy, he looks like somebody put him in that position of power to me. That's true, and he's wearing that coat like a boss. All right, what's next? <laughs> oh, and of course, we get, we got to look at Captain Phasma. Captain Phasma, played by Gwendolyn Christie. She looks awesome. That outfit just looks killer. I cannot wait to find out more about what this line of troopers are, you know, and what they do, because she's not unique. I don't think she's going to be unique in this, so that'll be interesting to see. All right, what's next? And, of course, just a good old shot of somebody in the jumpsuit walking away from what looks like a painted black and <laughs> orange uh, X-Wing of some sort. Oh, my gosh. And look in the background there. There's that... The classic... The, the classic box droid right, from, from, from the Jawas. Isley. Yes. Very cool. He looks like he's waiting for Val Kilmer to come up and give him a big hug. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is that is that the last one or is there another one? Oh, well, let's get to that one in a minute. Let's get to that one in a minute. So, anyway, Clark, you had a chance now to take a look at some mm -hmm. of these images, the things that jump out. What stood out to you about amongst those images? I'm just really excited. I mean, it looks like it looks like um, the uh, the original the original trilogy to me, which I think is super cool. I'm very excited for that. And um, you know, you guys uh, listening to you guys talk, it was like watching sports announcers <laughs> kind of describe what was going on <laughs> on the field. Um, so I feel like I learned a lot. I'm a Star Wars fan. I love Star Wars. Um, I grew up on it, and um, but I am not as entrenched in the game as you two are. So this was, uh, I'm actually very glad that I got to go through picture by picture and listen to you two explain <laughs> what exactly was going on. So uh, I'm really excited. I'm really excited. And I know J.J. Abrams, which I know we'll get to the interview in a minute, but he's such a Star Wars fan and I know he's going to do right by the franchise. And I think these pictures are a great indication of what's going to come. So I'm excited about it. It is a little bit weird that just looking at a couple of still pictures, I can honestly tell you it moved a little bit. Um, <laughs> but that's what, that's, what's, that's what Star Wars what are some of the images that really stood out to you that you like the most? I actually liked watching the Daisy Ridley one because it proves that she's going to be a heroine that's going to get her hands dirty, that she's not just some princess that, that, that has this great background. She probably comes from nothing, a lot like what Luke Skywalker came from, and that she might be the figure in this next trilogy where she's going to be the one going forward that's going to save the galaxy or whatever she has to do against the likes of Captain Phasma and Kylo Ren. I love that shot of Phasma, too, because to quote Luke Skywalker, to paraphrase him, it looks like she's seen some some action in that suit. This is not her first rodeo. There's some scarring going on. It's very different from what the classic Stormtrooper, even the new First Order uniform looks like. So a lot of these things stand out to me, but like you said, they picked the right image to put on the cover of Entertainment Weekly. Oh, Seeing Kylo Ren yeah, in the snow with that lightsaber. It looks like what every team used to fear going into Green Bay in December. <laughs> like It's just snowy. We know we're not going to get out of here with a win. Peyton Manning is having a bad day. <laughs> so, I mean, look, but look, one of the other things, though, that really came out of this, this piece in Entertainment Weekly is 
is J.J. Abrams talks a lot about Kylo Ren, this dude back here. Now, I just wanted to bring up, on last week's Jedi Council, I mentioned that I had somebody on the inside tell me that, hey, one of these main characters in this movie, the name you're hearing for them is not really their name. And so we were like, could it be Kylo Ren? Could it be one of the other guys? So we were asking that question. Then J.J. Abrams, we got a couple of quotes now from, from the J.J. Uh, Abrams interview from Entertainment Weekly. So let's, let's bring up the first one here. This is the first quote, and they're talking about Ren here. Uh, oh, that's another great picture of him walking with the troopers behind him. Anyway, that's him and his boys. That looks like the shot of Boys in the Hood. It's such a yeah, great shot. Yeah. What does he want? <laughs> that much remains unclear, although he seems to be a Vader obsessive with an appearance influenced by that dark lord of the Sith who makes his demise, who meets his demise long before Ren's birth. The movie explains the origins of the mask and where it's from, but the design was meant to be a nod to the Vader mask, Abrams tells EW. Ren is well aware of what comes before, and that's very much a part of the story of the film. That's fascinating. Now in this next part. As for his weapon of choice, there was some speculation that maybe it was he was an artifact hunter and he just found it mm -hmm. as, as a remnant of the old Republic. But this is entering. He says, as for the weapon of choice, Abrams uh, can confirm what many suspected. It's a tool he crafted all by his lonesome. The lightsaber is something that he built himself and is as dangerous and as fierce as the and as ragged as the character. So you hear that comment. Mark, what do you make of the, those I, quotes? I think that this guy definitely had a fat head of Darth Vader on his wall when he was growing <laughs> up. And to echo Christian Harlow from Jedi Council sentiments is that, remember when that concept art came out when it was somebody looking at Darth Vader's skull? And we even saw in that second teaser trailer a picture of the charred uh, uh, helmet of Darth Vader. Right. Kylo Ren is a fan of this guy, and he is an artifact hunter to some degree where he's looking at old Force relics, and maybe the knowledge that he gained from researching all this is what led him to be able to construct his own awesome looking lightsaber so this guy clearly is hellbent on evil but what jj says to me it says to me personally like he called me yesterday <laughs> and he's like th this guy is a lot more complex he isn't just somebody who's straight up evil i think there's a lot of stuff going on in there anytime you have somebody who's this strong in the force or is learning about the force it's more than just a snidely whiplash kind of bad mm -hmm. guy there's a lot of uh, layers to this character now on top of those comments you know, one of the things that jj also pointed out was that look he is his name, his birth name is not Ren, and we'll get to those things in a second. <laughs> but he's a part of a group called the Knights of Ren, which I th I thought sounded fascinating. But he also goes into it a little bit more. He talk he compares Kylo Ren to Luke Skywalker. Mm -hmm. That Luke Skywalker being a character who came up from nothing, had greater aspirations, was drawn into something bigger than himself. He said Kylo Ren is almost like the the mere reflection of that, mm -hmm. and that even people on the dark side think they're the heroes of their story, and that's kind of a bit of, of Kylo Ren, which makes gives so many different layers to who this character is. You know, in the first couple of trailers, Clark, I looked at this guy and thought, he will be a player in this film. Mm -hmm. He'll be one of the pieces of the puzzle. It seems like he's actually going to be a real focal piece. Anyway, hearing all that stuff from JJ, what are your impressions? Well, I just, I love, you know, if you guys watch the show or you know anything about me, I love villains, I love genre, I love mm -hmm. horror and those types of things. But I think what makes a compelling dark figure or or villain is is the complexity that we're talking about. And the idea that JJ is sort of, um, is bringing those things up now and sort of laying the groundwork to let the fans know that, yes, this guy is dangerous, but he also is going to be a complicated character. I think is awesome. And I think that those nuances are what makes these movies interesting in the first place. The fact that we learn that Darth Vader has a different kind of side to him. Yes, he's this scary, scary figure in A New Hope, but we learn so much more about him. I think right. that's why he has stood the test of time as one of the most compelling villains in, in cinema. So I think that these comments and quotes are really exciting, and he just... He looks awesome. He looks awesome. <laughs> and now there's another set of quotes that are really interested about Ren. So let's take a look at those right now. These ones are very intriguing. But there's another wrinkle to Kylo Ren. In typical Abrams fashion, the more the filmmaker reveals, the more questions arise. It turns out Kylo Ren isn't the character's real name, or at least not the name that he was born with. Dun, dun, dun. I just got goosebumps reading the damn quote. I just got goosebumps reading the quote. You're going to look at this. His the hair Fitbit is going off the charts up. right now. Okay, so he is not who he appears to be. Kylo Ren is not his birth name. Uh, look, I'm going to just call it. I'm not. Well, no. 
I'm going to call it what it looks like to me. I think this leads more and more to going to some of that old, discarded, expanded universe stuff. I think this is a son of Han Solo. I think this is a son of Han and Leia. I think that's what's... And I think the way it's going to turn out, I'm probably 10 degrees wrong on this, like way <laughs> wrong. But what I'm envisioning in my head right now is... This is a guy who got introduced to the notions of the Force because of Uncle Luke and all this kind of stuff. He started, he became obsessed with that path, finding out who his grandfather is in Darth Vader, becomes obsessed with that, starts following that in his own path, and thinks he's the hero of his own story when actually he's fighting for the wrong... I, I mean, I don't know. Totally going off on a wild uh, goose chase here, but the fact that there is going to be so much more to him, the fact that Kylo Ren is not who he is born as... This excites me so much. I'm so happy right now. Anyway, Mark, you, you hear those quotes. What do you think? Well, I, I think that you might have been onto something when you mentioned that last week on Jedi Council. And that, like, look, in this landscape that we're in, in the post Return of the Jedi world, it's not like you can just go be a Jedi Knight anywhere. It's not like CrossFit, where there's one on every corner <laughs> and you can go start working out. You need to know somebody with the last name Skywalker to get introduced to this stuff. So I think there's going to be some sort of link, whether it's actually actually a kid of Han and Leia or of Luke and whoever he was shacking up with, or it's just somebody that maybe trained with Luke at some sort of Jedi Temple situation. But from everything we've seen, from everything we've heard, Luke may not have that much to do with the story being told in Episode 7. He may be off pulling an Obi-Wan Kenobi and just hiding out somewhere, waiting yeah. for all this stuff to dissipate or to see what the next evolution of the Force is. This is clearly it, and it clearly spells doom for whoever is fighting against it. <laughs> Doom is coming. All right, so what were your reactions to the, that sort of I'm, I'm on board, and I'm excited for December. That's what I'll say. I, like, yeah. I, I, you know, I can't even begin to speculate, but I'm, I'm stoked. It looks great. I'm so thrilled. All right, to summarize the story, I'm so happy. <laughs> All right, that was not the only thing to drop. I'm sure we're going to get a lot more into this come Jedi Council tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Christian is at home weeping silently in his, in his bed he that he's tweeted, not on he today. He Instagrammed a photo at 7 a.m. this morning of the cover. Like, well, I have to have this right now. I was like, how are you up at 7 a.m.? I can confirm that his wife actually locked him in the shed. So he's <laughs> fine. Everybody's safe for now. 